In this video, we'll speak to Thomas, who is a special investigator within the engineering, procurement and construction sector. This sector is often one where we hear of many scandals related to bribery and corruption issues. So it's really interesting to hear Thomas's take on these issues and how they feature in his day-to-day -day work. It's also interesting speaking to Thomas is we can learn a little bit about his career path. Thomas originally came from the French National Police, so the public sector law enforcement, and made the transition into the private sector. So it'll be really interesting to hear his career path as well. Thomas, firstly, thank you for agreeing to speak with me today. Um, I'm, I know my students are really interested in finding more about the engineering, procurement and construction sector. So in your current role as a, a special investigator, could you describe your role and, and your average day? So thank you for having me today. It's a real pleasure to, 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 to take the, the time to, to discuss with you and, and to present my day-to-day my -day life and my job uh, as, a, as an investigator. Uh, to answer your question, so as a fraud investigator, I have to investigate the, the, the cases that uh, are reported to, uh, to our department. And uh, it, it goes through, uh, so the investigation that I'm doing uh, are related to uh, the, the, the potential wrongdoings uh, made by uh, the, 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 employee, the employees of the company, but also uh, some third parties that um, Bombardier is working with. And, and in a more general manner, the company uh, works with. Um, and, uh, but it's not only that. We also use now the, the data from the company to try to deter uh, potential wrongdoings that we could not see um, first, or that people may not be aware, and, uh, and we investigate accordingly. Um, so my day-to-day -day, day -day life is, is, is that there's no routine. There's no routine at all. And that's, I, that, that's what I really like. Uh, it's your day today will not be the same next week. Uh, and, and it's very cool. Um, and, but most of the time, the process, there's, there's kind of a, of a similar process and that could be split in two, three phases, three main phases. The first is the reception and the review of uh, of the wrongdoings, of the information that we receive. And, uh, and when we receive such, such information, we, we review it and we, we try to do some plan um, as to how we will perform the investigation. The second, phase is, the second phase is the investigation in itself. And it's mainly, I think, the most exciting aspect of the, uh, of the, of the process. We, we review documents, we meet with some people, we, we meet lots of people uh, to, to, get, um, to get to the truth. Uh, we do some IT forensics, so we could review um, computers, we could review uh, phones, cell phones, and, and other uh, you know, IT equipment. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that takes a lot of, that, that takes, that's take a lot of time, and uh, that is, I would say that the most interesting aspect. And finally, the third phase is the reporting. So once we've, when we have covered information, enough information and enough evidence, we, um, we produce a report that we share with some a specific, uh, with some key stakeholders of the company and, uh, and some decisions are made based on our recommendations. So, and, uh, and just to update you, uh, I was part of the investigation team of Bombardier uh, until uh, August the 3rd, and now I've transitioned to uh, a position of compliance uh, operations specialist. For, so uh, I'm less with the investigations and I know more how we could use the investigations to um, improve the compliance operations. And that's a, a really exciting uh, position. Yeah, I may have to come back at a future date and ask these same <laughs> questions about your new role. Um, in so, terms of your special investigation role, I find it really interesting that you were describing um, the type of uh, cases you would deal with. So you mentioned um, third party clients and also uh, employees of the company as well. Mm -hmm. 
So the insider risk versus those third parties. In terms of your investigation, planning and preparation, are there any differences in terms of how you would approach these two different um, groups of uh, suspects? I'd say no. Um, the only, I would say the only difference is how, uh, when we will uh, approach the third party. Because the third party has information, as the third parties have information, and uh, at some point we need to get this information. And, but we don't want to, uh, to, 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 to jeopardize the, the investigation. So we, we, when we need to deal with third parties, we, we try to, to deal with them, you know, we say in the last phase of this, in the last, not seconds, but in the last uh, parts of the, the second phase. With the employees, we kind of have all the details that we need uh, to, to perform the investigation. So that's the, um, we, we try to investigate with, um, with the data that we, that we have. And uh, if we need to get additional details when it comes to third parties investigation, so we, we wait until the last minute. Okay, okay. And the sector which you work in, so you mentioned your employer. Um, in terms of the engineering procurement construction se uh, sector, there is a history of uh, corruption and bribery allegations and scandals, um, especially here in in Canada in recent times. Um, what kind of what kind of financial crime challenges or compliance challenges have you observed working in this sector? So, so you mentioned that is uh, an issue here in Canada. That's true, but I would say it's an issue, you know, worldwide. I come from France, and we we have the same issues. And uh, from the investigations that I've done so far, um, it's, 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 a, it's a problem that you can find everywhere in the world. Um, that being said, the challenges that we, um, that we met uh, during, when, that, in, that we've met during the investigation is, is uh, you know, when a company faces a scandal. So what do we do and how how do we, uh, how does the company can do something? And the, 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 the first thing that, that, that comes to, to, to my mind is the, the change of culture. So going through a, a culture of doing business at all costs to uh, doing business, but in an ethical manner. And, you know, it takes lots of time and energy to, um, to, to let people First, know and to educate them to change the, the, the way to proceed, the way to do business. Um, that's, I would say, that's one of the challenges. Um, the other challenge is that we have, um, the other challenge that we have is, um, is uh, to let people know that compliance is not a roadblock for business. We want to persuade people that we are a business partner. It's a, it's, it's a different mindset. And most of the time, from what I've seen, it's the business you know, considers, as a, considers investigators and, and compliance staff as, yeah, as a roadblock. You know, if, if we deal with, uh, with compliance, you know, the business will take time. Yeah, maybe it could take more time, but it's not necessarily true. But at least we will, we will manage to... Um, to, to, to get contracts in, a, in an ethical manner. Yeah. Um, sorry, go ahead. It's really a common observation. A lot of individuals have mentioned is the challenge or the, conf or the perceived conflict between compliance and business. Um, so you mentioned, obviously, a lot of steps you take in your, in your role trying to, trying to articulate that compliance is not a roadblock to doing business. Have you got any examples of uh, best practice or tips which you could give to um, those working in, in the sector? To convince people that we are not a roadblock? To help them, um, I would say in, a, in, a, in an investigative uh, point of view, viewpoint, we, we are seen as, um, 
as a threat for people. And uh, and as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I try as much as I can yeah, to to find what what happened, but eventually to bring some um, solutions for the for the business, but realistic, pragmatic solutions, which that would I. This is what I would call the recommendations. And, uh, and most of the time before issuing my report, I, I have lots of discussions with the business and, and, and I present them you know, my, 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 my conclusions, how the, how the wrongdoings had happened. And then we discuss together saying, okay, how, we, how could we now avoid this situation in the future? Based on this discussion, we we managed to get a kind of a consensus a consensus on the on the recommendations and and we we work to implement the recommendations so that we can so so that we don't face the the, the same situation in the future. Perfect. And the future is really where my next question takes us. I've, obviously, we've spoken about some of the challenges that exist in recent times. How do you foresee these challenges? changing or evolving in the future? So companies will not have other, cho uh, other choices than having a, a strong compliance culture. So that it will not be only about compliance. It will be about, it will be uh, being ethical, uh, even, even when nobody's watching. That's, that's the thing, you know, it's not just get, getting a, um, a level of, yes, I'm, I am ethical, but we have to show that a company is ethical, you know, at all time. So when, some, when everybody is watching you and when nobody is watching you. So the companies will have to continue their effort to educate their employees to do the, to do the right thing versus the wrong thing. Um, the companies will have to continue to put... Um, appropriate controls in place to avoid any potential wrongdoings, any incentive to commit wrongdoings. Um, something more, um, you know, cont um, more, more recent, uh, the use of int uh, artificial intelligence and not only just using the big data. Uh, I think the, the, the AI will help the companies uh, to ensure or to have assurance that less wrongdoings are, are committed, or at least when a wrongdoing co is committed, that the appropriate people will be um, will be uh, will be uh, will get the information. Um, also, be reactive and 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 proactive. J just not companies will not just have to wait for uh, the scandal to 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 act but also to, to take the appropriate action that, okay, so to, that we avoid the scandal by doing the right things. And, uh, and also, as I mentioned earlier, consider compliance as a business partner, not a work. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think one of the big challenges that a lot of corporations in this sector have is the international nature of business. Mm -hmm. A lot of the big uh, companies in the sector have a footprint in many, many different jurisdictions with many different uh, legal frameworks, different compliance cultures. Uh, that, that can make it a challenge to develop a, a holistic compliance program. Um, if I turn back to domestic Canada, a, a lot of those um, students watching watching this video will be looking at roles in financial institutions, um, specifically transaction monitoring or anti-money laundering, anti-bribery investigations. And a roadblock often to these investigations is the transnational nature of some of the transactions. Mm -hmm. f f from your position within uh, one of these corporations, um, what advice could you give to individuals working in financial institutions when they are reviewing um, those international transactions? So I would say that um, we are not supposed to know everything. Um, and uh, when it, 
and especially when it comes to international international businesses. And um, of course, the experience will help you a lot to know where to look at and how to follow the money. But I would say, if you don't know, ask for help. Ask for help. Ask your peers. Ask your colleagues. Uh, ask your SMEs. Uh, and and at some, even even sometimes Google, you know, Google knows everything or most of most of what we have to know. And and uh, and that that's that would be my main advice. Um, so yeah, if you don't know, ask ask for help. And uh, investigators should be able to to get help from 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 people with specific knowledge background. Uh, I mean I mean by that IT legal accounting. And, uh, and also to use at some point the network to, to get the appropriate information when, when we need to review some those international transactions. Uh, and uh, yeah, if it doesn't, and you know, one of my advice would be if it does not good, keep asking why until you reach a valid answer. Asking why is the key Thing. It's the key thing to in, in terms of investigation and, and financial transactions. Absolutely. I mean, the question of asking why, asking those probing questions is really the mainstay of any investigator. I think um, when we look at companies and corporations in, in this sector, they often can have complex business structures. They can have uh, complex uh, domestic companies. They can have um, spin-offs in foreign jurisdictions, which can make it very different from a typical uh, retail customer account. Um, what should a financial crime professional know about how your industry operates? Uh, and as a, as a supplementary question, what skills should a financial crime professional have to be able to fully understand some of these financial transactions that are taking place? Curiosity. Curiosity. It's, it's the main, uh, it's curiosity, think out, of, think of, out of the box. And, but yeah, the main thing is curiosity. You, you have to be curious to do the, this job. You have to ask the questions, the, 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 the appropriate questions. So if, if you're curious enough, you will look, you will look for the, the appropriate answer. You will look for how to get to the information. You will, you will be, um, yeah, you will be in a good position to, to manage to do your role in a, in, you know, appropriately. So be curious. It's a great word, be, be curious. And that actually leads me on to my next question was really um, to change the conversation to a more personal note, because I know that um, you haven't always worked in the private sector. You, you were like myself in, in law enforcement before you mentioned um, from France. So I, I'd be really interested how your um, journey in your, in your path from, from law enforcement to the private sector occurred. So, yeah, so basically uh, I was in the French Gendarmerie for nearly 17 years. And, uh, and uh, you know, my, my, my path initially was pretty much um, normal. I studied as a staff officer in a, in a, police, uh, in a police station, in a gendarmerie, police, in a gendarmerie station. And, uh, but the only, maybe the, the difference that I could have you know, compared to some of my peers is, is that I knew where I wanted to go. And at some point I knew how I wanted, how I could go to where I wanted to go. Um, and to be very honest with you, when I started the, in the French Gendarmerie, uh, leaving the administration was a little bit out of the scope. Uh, but to summarize, I wanted to do, since the beginning, I wanted to do uh, financial investigations. And in my mind, it was what could be, what could damage the worst, the worst, the, 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 the fraudsters. You, know, you take their money, they are not happy. You send them to, the, to jail, yeah, it's part of the, it's part of the path. So yeah, I, I, I think I'd rather um, work on how to get to their uh, wallets than sending them to jail. Um, 
that being said, uh, to do financial investigation, I had to go to a specific, uh, you know, unit, gendarmerie unit. And uh, so I worked hard to, to get to that point and uh, eventually I managed to, uh, to be uh, in the, the serious crime unit in, in Versailles near Paris as a, as a financial investigator. Um, during this time, I kept learning. And I had to, I had to work out to learn to, 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 to get to higher ranks, but I, I also had to learn to get to specific positions. So I kept learning and I kept learning and I kept learning. That's, that was my, and that, that's still my main motto, keep learning. And yeah, that's, that's what, you know, allowed me to be part of uh, very interesting investigations, very you know, major investigations. I have been involved in, uh, in major investigations in French Guiana, where I, where I had to investigate on uh, illegal gold mining uh, wrongdoings, crimes, uh, and, and more specifically the, 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 to, to determine the proceeds where and what where and where were the proceeds of the crime, the crimes. Um, I also worked on uh, labor laws, wrongdoings, and um, and I was and I was also part of a, of an investigation that had ramification, um, you know, worldwide, uh, related to a gang of counter counterfeiters of a, of a luxury goods. And uh, at some point of my career, I had the opportunity to join SNC Lavano. As, uh, as part of the compliance investigation team. And yeah, I, for me, it was, a, it was synonym of new challenges. So I decided to jump in and here I am. Yes, I'm always curious speaking with former law enforcement, um, tr trying to find out what was the motivation for moving from the public sector into the private sector. Um, because I, like myself and like colleagues, we all have different reasons for, for doing so. And I, I, I'm always interested to find out almost like a, a comparison between your experiences in law enforcement and in the private sector. What kind of similarities and differences have you observed? So just to, to answer your questions about what, what was the trigger to, for the change um, I was finishing my um, um, a, a law degree, degree, degree in, uh, in, in, uh, in France, and um, it was related to compliance. And this job was some sort of, you know, the, the way to use what I've just learned in the corporate, in the corporate, in the, the private sector. Uh, and I know when it comes to uh, when it comes to differences between the, the private and the, and the, the, in the, 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 sorry, the, um, I missed the word. The, the public, the public, the public thank you, the public sector. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, the, the results are pretty much different, but it's, it's kind of the same, you know, as a financial, as a financial investigator, part of my job was to investigate a vast scope of financial crime. And, and a big part of my time was to, to trace the ill-gotten gains, you know, the, 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 the proceeds of crimes. And the objectives then were to bring people, bring the, 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 the criminals to, the, the, to the, the judicial system and, and to make sure that the justice could seize these proceeds to be efficient. Now, in the private sector, my job is to know and to understand if uh, a wrongdoing is substantiated or not. And, uh, and obviously I don't bring people to the, to the justice now, but my report goes to um, the legal department and the human resources department so that they can take appropriate actions you know, when the case are substantiated. That's, yeah, that's, that's the main difference, I would say. That was a very, very clear answer. And it really, really um, speaks to the question I was, I was asking you know, in terms of the scope of investigation, the, the outcomes. 
of, of, of the work that you do. Obviously, um, as a follow-on question, I've asked this to many people. Um, as we progress through our career, we have the opportunity to reflect on decisions and, and actions that we've taken to get where we are today. What lessons have you learned along the way as you've progressed from, from law enforcement into your current role? You know, I'm a big fan of Star Wars. And I would answer this question that, uh, by saying that everybody may join the dark side of the fort at some point. Everybody. From, you know, from, you know, from me, I'd say at some point, you know, I don't know what could be the trigger, but at some point I could also be, I don't know, but everybody could, could be a criminal or could, do a, could be a froster at some point. It's just a question of, you know, opportunity needs, you know, the fraud triangle. It's, yeah, everybody can join the, may join the, the dark side of the fort. You know, I think we need more Star Wars references in compliance, if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, so to flip, flip that question around, um, what advice would you give to, a, to someone who is looking to follow in your footsteps? You know, whether it be a financial investigation role in law enforcement or in the industry that you're currently working in? So yeah, the, the question that I would ask, that I would first ask is where it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question that you know, human resources often ask during a recruitment, uh, during a recruitment phase. So where do you see yourself in 10, 15, 20 years? You have to think of what you want to do. Uh, and as long as you know where you want to go, you will know how you can get to your point, how you can reach your target. A good friend of mine once said, you know, eyes on the prize. And I think it's, 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 a, it's a way to, it's a way to, yeah, if you want. And yeah, I think, I think really that's, that's, the, that's the thing, you know, where do you see yourself in, uh, in, in 10, 15, 20 years and, uh, and, uh, and you will know how to, to get there. You, you, will be, you will take the appropriate actions to, do, to, 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 get to, your, uh, to get your objectives. You will keep learning as I did. Um, I, kept my learn I have kept my, my eyes open and um, try to think out of, the, out of the box. There is just one good solution. And, um, and be humble enough to ask for help when, when, when there's a need for that. And, uh, yeah, keep asking why. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of questions that you will have on a day-to-day -day basis, but if you, if you want to, to be in this field, think of that. Where do you see yourself? How to get to the point? Learn and, and stay humble. You know, those are really, really great points. It's, it's, those are questions which we don't often ask ourselves or we don't ask too often. And it's, it's very easy for one year, two years, three years to, to go past. And we're in the same, same roles without thinking that we have to uh, follow a plan. But those are really, really good um, pieces of advice that you've, you've given. Um, you know, thank you so much for your time today. As a closing, closing remarks, would, would, you, would you have any final comments you'd like to give to uh, someone who's, who, who's watching this and considering a career? In compliance, so it's a it's exactly a, a very good question, and and there's no real advice. If there's, you know, try to if you want to go into this field, um, you just be aware that it's a very very interesting job uh, to do. It's uh, it you will have to to give lots of your time but the, the results will be um, really interesting, you know, for you and for the company as well, or maybe for the, for the public. Um, the, the thing is, the objective is, is to stop the, stop the crimes and, and to take the appropriate action, to help people, to help the company, you know, 
either if you are in the, in the public sector or in the private sector. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very enjoyable work, and, but it's a very demanding one. So yeah, it's enjoy, uh, try, you know, if, if you want to jump in, jump in. It's the only advice I would give you. Well, Thomas, thank you so much for your time. It, it has really been insightful and it's made me think quite a bit about my own career paths and, and the questions which I wish I had asked uh, as I moved forward. So I certainly hope um, that those watching the show will, will definitely take on those points. Um, so yes, thank you very much for, for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.